It's another calm and sunny day in Efet here on the coast of southern Turkey. But despite the still waters, seismic activity has been underway in this area for thousands of years. Two years after the tsunami that killed more than 230,000 people in Southeast Asia, European scientists are warning a similar scenario could happen nearer to home. And this region in the eastern Mediterranean is considered the most vulnerable. Turkish geophysicist Ahmet Alcina from the University of Ankara considers the risks to be very serious. He's the local coordinator of the transfer project aimed at better understanding tsunami processes in the Euro-Mediterranean region. The city is located near the fault zone, the Hellenic Arc, and Hellenic Arc has a character subduction zone. African plate uh, beneath under uh, Asian plate. There are several similarities between the Sunda arc near Sumatra, which caused Indonesia event 2004. And those similarities are important that we have to apply them to this region and understand the generation mechanisms of tsunamis. Transfer project. Uh, will uh, assess of tsunamis affecting European coast and uh, the generation mechanisms understand their propagation and coastal amplification. This animation shows a tsunami after an underwater earthquake close to Fethiye. 30 teams from all over Europe are using these graphics to better develop strategies to protect people in the region. And it's from here, some way from the coast in Bologna in Italy, that the research is being coordinated. <laughs> Professor Stefano Tinti, a geophysicist from the University of Bologna, analyzes all the data from the different control stations around Europe. He and his team hope their work will lead to the construction of an early warning system that ideally would take just 20 minutes to let people know a tsunami was forming. Tsunamis happened in the Mediterranean in the past, so they'll happen again in the future. And today we have no way of protecting people from a tsunami. The only solution is to create in the Mediterranean a tsunami warning system, similar to the one that already exists in the Pacific and the one that's under construction in the Indian Ocean. Innovative algorithms and programs have been developed to assess the risks for vulnerable European shores. The aim is to help people to react faster in the case of an eventual catastrophe. We've developed comprehensive scenarios. Our simulations help us understand the main characteristics of the tsunamis. We can better understand the strength of the tsunami waves. So, for instance, we can predict if the buildings on the coasts will be able to resist them. We can also predict which are the best ways for people to escape. We can predict which buildings, bridges and so on would be flooded by the waves and which ones won't. To achieve this, international cooperation is vital. Back to Fethiye and geophysicist Ahmed Yalcina, a long-time collaborator of Mr. Tinti, is visiting one of the seismic stations which overlooks the city and its harbour. Here, seismometers constantly survey the situation, registering the slightest tremors. Low-level seismic activity is quite common in the region, and that's why Fethiye and its surroundings are a perfect place for the transfer project. We are going to apply the model and understand the probability of the uh, tsunami impact uh, and also uh, the local effect of tsunamis in Fethiye Bay and also Rodos Town. 
And uh, we are going to understand the vulnerability is index of the uh, buildings near the shoreline. And we are going to uh, determine the hydrodynamic loads uh, distribution along the shoreline. And then uh, after that, we are going to prepare the inundation map. On Fetier, the collected data is transmitted automatically to Istanbul. <laughs> The bustling city on the Bosphorus is the geophysical bridge that links Europe to Asia. It also has a long history of earthquakes. Here at the Kandili Observatory, Mustafa Erdik and his team gather earthquake data as part of another European project, SAFER. Researchers hope their work will lead to future early warning systems and therefore more time to put evacuation plans into practice. The main aim of SAFER project is to capitalize on the developments, especially for the early warning and rapid response systems, uh, bring some standards and methodologies, and then uh, some pilot applications all over the Europe so that it can be adopted easily by the public services, by the civil protection agencies, and by the governments at large. But Erdik and most other experts on tsunamis and earthquakes say despite all the research, they still can't predict for sure that a catastrophe is going to happen. Earthquake and tsunami science are still in their infancy. We think that for the last one billion years we are having earthquakes on the earth and then we are just watching them for the one last 100 years. And we are trying to predict what, has, what will take place. It's such a narrow time frame that it would be very difficult to make predictions for the future. So, and the process itself is chaotic, that you cannot uh, actually put physical laws or the modeling, mathematical modeling behind it. However, researchers agree that passing information to affected populations is vital to prevent dramatic situations from turning deadly. Tragically, the 2004 tsunami confirmed the importance of transmitting information as soon as possible. Example is Simulu Island. The uh, epicenter is 50 kilometers away from the island. Approximately 80,000 people is living. Eight people died only. The reason that they have experienced tsunami in 1907, and they understood that after the earthquake, sea invades shoreline. If the people know uh, some basic things about tsunami, they can easily evacuate themselves. Scientists hope their research will buy valuable minutes or even seconds for those who live along vulnerable coastlines if the worst does happen. And the normally relatively peaceful Mediterranean is transformed by a giant underwater earthquake. <laughs>